Beneath the peaceful surface of Europe's waterways lies a hidden danger. A colossal aquatic creature lurks in the murky depths. Over the last 50 years, it has colonized most of Europe's rivers, even the most polluted. This oversized beast is a source of concern to scientists. We've seen the arrival of a new species, a very large predator, and the question we have to ask is, will there be an impact of this species on the other species that live here? This intruder has become the largest freshwater predator in Europe. And even hunts on land. In 2011, strange events took place in the River Tarn in southwest France. As they crossed the old bridge in the town of Albi, pedestrians reported large fish eating birds in the river. Frédéric Santour, a specialist in freshwater fauna, is leading the investigation. The point of this study in Albi is to examine a behavior that is very unusual. In a case that is fairly rare in the animal kingdom, of a species that lives in water, but which leaves the water on purpose in order to catch its prey on land. So which fish species is capable of coming out of the water in order to catch birds? Amongst the large freshwater fish, the carp is an unlikely suspect. It lives on vegetable matter, insect larvae, and small crustaceans. Pike, however, will eat prey up to half their size, and will even eat their young. The larger it grows, the larger its victims. Shrimps, amphibians, chicks, and even rodents. But for pike, like for most fish, leaving the water is extremely risky. In Albi, there is only one giant fish prepared to breach this lethal boundary. The catfish. Wells catfish appeared mysteriously in the town at the end of the 1980s. How does this aquatic predator locate birds or any of its other victims? Wells catfish have an amazing array of sensory organs that allow them to locate their prey they have nearly a quarter of a million taste buds inside their mouths and on their lips, as well as on their whiskers, fins, and all over their skin. These work alongside their sense of smell and, in a way, allow them to taste at a distance. Their sense of smell is also highly developed thanks to multiple receptors in their nostrils, which have a separate entrance and exit, allowing water to circulate constantly. Catfish can smell certain compounds at one part per 10 billion parts of water. 
In addition, their swim bladder acts as a sounding board that transmits vibrations directly to the fish's internal ear. The Wells catfish also has three pairs of whiskers, or barbels, one mobile pair above and two below its head. They allow the fish to detect pressure waves emitted by their prey, so the catfish can detect them by the wake they leave behind. And finally, the lateral line that detects vibrations and low frequency sounds particularly those made by animals at the surface. So catfish are incredibly well equipped to pick up any signs of their prey. Their senses outperform those of any other freshwater fish. The warmer the water, the more acute they are, far exceeding the limits of our perception in order to find food. Catfish feed mainly on other aquatic species, like roaches. When hunting agile prey, this massive predator drives them towards the natural frontiers of the river, the surface, or the shore. With so many prey, there is strength in numbers. Together, the catfish form a moving wall that pushes the panicking fish towards their final destination. For the first time ever, this footage shows catfish hunting together, much like the group hunting practiced by dolphins. But these attacks are not coordinated like those of marine mammals. The catfish work together, but they have no particular strategy, allowing some of the roaches a lucky escape. So what birds could be naive enough to be snatched in these muddled attacks? Fishermen attempt to solve this mystery for the scientists by removing the fish's stomach contents. At the beginning of spring, the catfish's bellies bulge with roaches and earthworms. In order to gain more information, Frederick Santel's laboratory also takes a number of stomach samples at different seasons. In the middle of summer 2010, one lab student made a strange discovery. This foot is not webbed like a duck's. It could belong to one of the river town's regular visitors, the wagtail. But genetic analysis shows that this is the foot of a very common bird. The pigeon.
diurnal birds have a varied diet and feed on our waste. Their survival depends on humans. The more people, the more waste, and the more pigeons. They seem to have found the ideal habitat in the center of Albi. Pecking at the crevices of this 11th century bridge, they find all the salt their bodies need. Pigeons have been feeding off this mortar for more than a thousand years. But the salt makes them thirsty. There's no shortage of water but it's not easy to reach. The town of Albi is built right to the edge of the river Tarn. Around it, humans have created a vertical world. Luckily for the pigeons, the summer heat coincides with a drop in the river's water level. Upstream from a wooded island, the current has created a pebble beach. It's an ideal spot for pigeons. While they usually only drink 2% of their body weight in water each day, that figure triples during the summer. as do the appetites of some other local inhabitants. That are able to detect the pigeons' movements from a distance. Their senses are on red alert. Their barbels detect vibrations from the pigeons' movements. Their nostrils smell the grease washed from their feathers. The catfish are drawn inexorably towards the pigeons. But they are hindered by the shallow water. Their prey is so near, and yet so far. Unlike pigeons, catfish barely use their eyesight at all. When their other senses tell them that the birds have left, they swim away and keep their distance in deep water well out of sight. The catfish are nowhere to be seen. So after a few minutes, the thirsty pigeons head back to the empty beach once more. Pigeons are sociable birds. If one takes off, others soon follow suit. They depend on each other for their survival. Catfish, though, depend solely on their extraordinary senses, not on each other. When it comes to hunting pigeons, catfish are territorial only tolerating others of a similar size. Between three and five feet long. As the pigeons drink and bathe, the fish circle round, always in a clockwise direction.
waiting for any signal, any movement. Catfish are unable to locate a motionless pigeon. And a lone pigeon is more anxious, more aware, and more cautious. In order to catch a pigeon, the catfish needs to find a bird that is both confident and distracted by the presence of others before beaching. Lunging onto the beach is a dangerous business. The fish risks stranding itself completely and dying slowly under the summer sun. In order to make its getaway, it must keep its tail in the water. Wary pigeons are protected by the gentle slope of the beach. The catfish's attacks seem to be hopeless. Patience is the key. If the fish lay siege to the beach long enough, a pigeon will eventually commit a fatal error. Stepping into deeper water, turning its back on the catfish. Some catfish have become specialists. Up to 80% of their diet is made up of pigeons. These fish have the ability to learn. Their apprenticeship is based on trial and error. And by imitation. Catfish are copycats. The catfish in Albi still only achieve a 28% success rate despite multiple attacks. Scientists estimate that one pigeon would feed a four-foot catfish for 60 hours. Which explains why these medium-sized fish jealously guard their hunting territories. It also explains why the very large catfish that are found in the area have never been seen hunting pigeons. The food source is not significant enough and the risk of stranding is too great. Frédéric Santou is still astounded by this new behavior. 
The main elements that we've learned from this study are that a species has made a major adaptation to a new environment and also to a different period of the day, because normally the catfish feeds at night, but here the pigeons are active during the day, so the catfish have adapted their activity in order to come and feed during the day. Large catfish, bigger than a grown man, have never been observed hunting in Albi, and it is assumed that they feed on large prey at night. Surprisingly, catfish sometimes feed on animals that are completely out of proportion to their great size, including these tiny shellfish called corbicula. When the summer heat reduces the oxygen content in the water, these freshwater clams die. Their flesh ferments and floats to the surface. Where catfish locate them and gulp them down. But the corbicular season is very short, only a few days each year. They cannot sustain the growth of such a large animal. And yet, fishermen tell tales of gigantic fish throughout Europe. The biggest one that I've ever caught was five foot nine. They haven't reached their full size, which is just over eight feet. These are not just stories. A few years ago, in the Danube Delta, I saw a sport fisherman catch very large catfish, more than 220 pounds. Even scientists agree that giant catfish are widespread in France's rivers. In France, we have fish that are bigger than 8 feet. Persistent rumors claim that colossal catfish live in the large rivers of Eastern Europe. The largest catfish to be caught in the Danube Delta was 8 feet 10 inches, if I remember rightly. And it weighed more than 650 pounds. So the largest catfish in the world seemed to come from the Danube Delta, Europe's largest separating Romania from Ukraine. Frédéric Santoul tries to understand what environmental factors and eating habits cause this colossal size and why they vary from one region to another. In order to find out, he needs to take biopsies or skin samples from living catfish during different seasons. We collaborate with a lot of fishermen, quite often specialized fishermen, who are able to capture up to 10 fish a day. They have a tried and tested method. Out of a representative selection of catfish, they take small tissue samples, often from the fins. Which they immerse immediately in alcohol. These specimens are sent for so-called isotopic analysis in specialized laboratories in order to learn more about the fish's feeding habits. The studies prove that catfish don't have the large appetites that their bulging bellies suggest. A five-foot-long catfish only eats a couple of pounds of food per week when the water is at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. During the winter, when the water temperature falls below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, they stop eating completely. Catfish have gained their greedy reputation from their opportunism. They're not fussy about their food. As well as pigeons they eat, roaches, but also amphibians, pike, and even swans. The samples from Romania should also reveal genetic information about the origins of catfish in Western Europe. 
To reconstruct the catfish migration, the samples will need to be compared with those taken from catfish from various European waterways. These are provided by fishermen where the catfish are hungry, while free divers are called in for those that refuse to take the bait. This comparative study reveals surprising results. Originating in the Danube, catfish have colonized the whole of Europe in fewer than 40 years. Particularly Italy, Switzerland, France, Great Britain, Spain, and Portugal. They have even conquered other continents like North Africa and South America where they are found in Brazil. The catfish's burgeoning empire can only be explained by human involvement. Intentional introductions. Introductions that may have come just in time for the catfish. Romanians traditionally eat catfish from the Danube, and here, in their original home, they are in danger from overfishing. Today, only small specimens can be found, but local fishermen like Christian Hasnas remember when French fishermen came here to fish. I've heard stories of French fishermen who came to fish in the delta 50 years ago. And I know that at that time, catching a 100-pound fish was no big deal. It was routine. But I don't know if the French took catfish home with them. I have no idea. Now, Romanian sport fishermen have to leave their own country to catch the big fish. I've heard of very big catfish in France, in a lake. Today, that's where the Romanians go to catch big fish. It's a lake called Saint Cassien. So how did a small lake in the south of France become a haven for Romanian catfish. Hidden in the Provencal back country, Saint Cassien Lake has only existed since 1966. It is entirely man-made created by diverting several rivers from the Alps to provide fresh water and produce electricity. So the presence of catfish in this reservoir of drinking water can only be the result of artificial fish stocking. Daniel Padretti, the fish warden for the lake, makes no secret that fish were deliberately introduced to indulge sport fishermen. The catfish arrived officially in 1991 and 1992. There were two introductions of a thousand little catfish that measured between seven and 10 inches. At the time, it was me that introduced them. It was me that emptied the little catfish out of the nets, so I know what size they were.
After that, over the years, we realized that fishermen were beginning to catch very small catfish, even smaller than the ones we'd introduced. We knew that the lake suited them and that they were reproducing. The fishing has started to get good for the sport fishermen, and that was the original goal when we introduced the fish. Wells catfish are currently invading Europe's major cities. Even the heart of Lyon, the third largest city in France. Until the beginning of the 1990s, there were no catfish in Lyon. But today, Fishermen come here to take on fish that are even bigger and heavier than themselves. Wrestling matches may continue for several hours, during which the fishermen can drift with the current over several miles. fishermen are on the hunt for trophies. In the past, big game fishing meant taking to the high seas or heading to the distant tropics. Now, thanks to the catfish, huge fish can be caught in the town center. Seven feet precisely, so it's a fish that is more than 20 years old. The catfish, originally from the large continental rivers, adapts better than any other species to the growing pollution in our waterways. This frankenfish thrives where others die. It tolerates the raised nitrogen levels caused by fertilizers leaching into the water as well as industrial heavy metals that are stored in its body and all sorts of human waste products. Catfish are swimming trash cans. Because we find traces of tar, PCBs and pesticides in their flesh, they are declared unfit for human consumption. Either to avoid poisoning themselves or out of respect for the frankenfish, fishermen practice catch and release. Like most catfish fishermen in Western Europe, they measure their trophy, then return the animal back to the water still alive. Indirectly, catfish survive thanks to human waste. Able to live for over 50 years, the fish continued to grow throughout their lifespan, reaching huge sizes. Using fish finders, trophy hunters are able to locate catfish even in murky water. These devices revealed an unexplained and paradoxical behavior that takes place every winter in the Rhone River. Just when their activity should be slowing down in the cold water, they form large groups. These congregations can last several days in a row, 
continuing day and night. The beginning and end of these improvised get-togethers is triggered by chemical communication between the catfish. More than 200 individuals weighing between 110 and 240 pounds each, almost two tons of catfish in the space of a few square feet. It's the largest concentration of freshwater biomass in the world. To gauge the state of the catfish population and the size of individual fish, freedivers join the party. These cold water aficionados have noticed that catfish group together in winter in most of Europe's large rivers, particularly in the Po, the longest river in Italy. Here, amateur fisherman Dino Ferrari has been looking for a record-breaking catfish for the last 20 years. In the warm waters of the Po, there is no respite. The catfish feed and grow all year round. Even in the middle of winter, they take the bait and keep the fishermen on their toes. Struggling for more than an hour, Dino hauls his trophy to the shore for the mandatory photo session before recording its all-important vital statistics. Measuring 8 feet 9 inches and weighing 280 pounds, this 30-year-old catfish is officially the largest ever caught with a rod and reel. In keeping with catch and release tradition, Dino frees his monster so it can continue to live and grow in the Po River. Throughout Europe, fishermen are obsessed with catching giant catfish, and yet the holy grail of the catfish fisherman is quite different. The ultimate prize for catfish trophy hunters is the Moby Dick of the rivers, the extremely rare albino catfish. The dream for a lot of catfish fishermen, if not all, is of course the albino catfish. There is about one in 5,000 or one in 10,000, since it's quite simply a genetic anomaly. It's something that is very, very rare. So when you catch one, it's really exciting. It might be the fish of a lifetime. Lionel Lucetta has devoted his entire life to this wild chase. We go on a lot of fishing trips, and for the last 20 years or so, there hasn't been a single trip where we haven't hoped to see a white catfish. Not a single day. We're always secretly hoping to see a white fish come up to the surface. It's going sideways. I don't know. That's it. It's under the boat. Put down your rod. Put down your rod. Look at that thing! More than six feet. To see that pure white arrive at the surface is incredible. It's so exciting, and it's like it's the first time, no matter what size it is. It's a very visceral feeling. This albino catfish is one of the largest ever caught. This battle between man and the white fish takes on a symbolism reminiscent of Moby Dick. 
That is a beautiful fish. That is a lovely baby. A lovely, lovely baby. Wow. Sport fishing shows the contrast between the fishermen's professed respect for the fish and their secret pride for trophies. Let's put it back quickly. It illustrates the dilemma experienced by all those involved. Should the catfish be categorized as a pest, which would ultimately lead to its eradication? Obviously, the catfish fishermen are quick to defend their passion. There has been no noticeable impact on the whitefish populations like carp, breams or roaches. For the moment, there have been no particular problems. Even the scientists seem to agree. In our role, we cannot categorize the catfish as a species that could cause biological disorders. The studies we have done on the eventual impact on freshwater fish do not show any significant impact by catfish. The catfish has won the ultimate battle that of public opinion. For the time being, at least, it will not be classified as a pest. The catfish could become the only wild fish in the world to die of old age, if the fishermen continue to catch and release. Catfish benefit both from human indulgence and incredible luck. Though it is already well equipped to survive in our midst, nature sometimes makes its life even easier. While most of the attacks on pigeons in Almi were unsuccessful, an unexpected event would soon give the catfish a helping hand. In autumn 2014, a huge storm flooded the hills near Albi. Flood water swept away everything in its path. The Tarn River rapidly rose to 12 feet above its normal level. Sheltering out of the current, the catfish continued their opportunistic lifestyle. But when the flood water reached Albi, it had a major effect on the landscape. The pigeon's island became unrecognizable. All the trees were uprooted or stripped bare. By spring 2015, the local council decided to remove the last of the dead trees. In the course of a few months, the island had changed drastically. The shores of the island were much steeper. The catfish were unharmed by these raging waters. Quite the opposite. The stony slope allows them to get much closer to the pigeons. Now they can hide out much nearer to the beaches. And as soon as the birds step into the water, they appear from nowhere. Their constant presence seems to have made the pigeons less cautious. Under the surface, they have turned into ghostly killers.
These massacres have little impact on the pigeon population. There are plenty left, drinking in the town's fountains. They're ready to take up the ecological niche left vacant by those that have been taken prey. As for the catfish, natural selection is at work all over Europe. This cannibal fish regulates its own population. Only the largest and most voracious survive. Over time, these intruders are sure to become even more resourceful, stubborn, and persistent. <laughs> 